when you grow up, I think like most of us do, uh, watching sort of like the Hollywood canon of, of the same movies, um, which can be beautiful and, 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 and moving and fun, um, but you feel like that's the way you look at the world, and then suddenly you're like, oh, you can also look at it this way, and there's something really liberating about that. Hi, my name is Peter Kinnett, and I'm here with Connor Jessup, actor, writer, director, and one of the people behind the incredible new initiative, Queer Was Always Here. It's so great to have you here today, Connor. So you have teamed up with Sebastian Croft yes. for a project called Queer Was Always Here. Yes. Which defines itself as a community um, dedicated to queer joy, queer history, queer art, three of my all-time favorite things. But it's also so much more than that. Do you want to talk a little bit about the catalyst behind this project and what exactly its mission is? Yeah, so Sebastian is an English actor and he's like one of my best friends. And last summer got approached about doing this um, one-off charity t-shirt. And he knew he wanted to support queer causes and he was trying to think of some image or some something that resonated with that for him. And he remembered that when he was a little kid, his brother told him that some animals are gay too. And this, for little Sebastian, this had a big impact on him. Somehow it made him feel less alone. And he invented these two characters of these two gay orange dinosaurs named Dylan and Derek who were in love in a time before we had invented homophobia, you know, because queerness long outdates bigotry. And people, for some reason, people really, really connected with that image and with that idea. And suddenly people were, um, getting little Dylan and Derek dinosaur tattoos and printing them on phone cases and making tote bags and making their own t-shirts and they were at prides in every, on every continent. And like, it just became this like really sweet, lovely, warm community. And this summer, uh, we started talking about it in ways that it could become more of a long-term project and not just a one-off thing. And we, both of us are actors. We're both in the arts. We have a lot of um, friends in those in that world. We have a lot of queer friends in that world, and we were trying to think of something that we could offer um, uh, that built on that sort of warm, inclusive, joyful space. So that's where sort of the organization queer was always here started with the two two gay dinosaurs. And its aim is to help basically displaced LGBTQ yeah. people around the world. So we work. There's this amazing um, British charity called Choose Love, which is a very, very large charity that does work with refugees and displaced people. Unbelievable work in every corner of, of, of the planet. Um, and we par have partnered with them, basically. So we are like a, like a sister organization. And so we fundraise for many, many grassroots organizations around the world who are doing work with queer refugees and displaced people. And those are people who um, are fleeing their home countries because of persecution, because of their sexualities and gender identities, or people who are fleeing broader conflicts like, um, like the war in Ukraine, but have very specific challenges and requirements because of their queerness. So there's a lot of people, it's like, it's maybe the most vulnerable, um, one of the most vulnerable sections of our community. So there's, there's a lot of organizations on the ground doing unbelievable work who need who need support. So can you tell us a bit more about the communities that this project is benefiting? Like we work with um, a Canadian charity actually called one of one of the organizations we support called um, Rainbow Railroad that is an, an unbelievable organization that's been around for a while that moves um, and supports uh, queer people um, in a lot of different regions. Uh, and supports their resettlement, gets them out of dangerous situations, um, moves them to safe houses, moves, and then eventually, hopefully, moves them to um, uh, safer countries um, and supports them through the whole process with legal aid, with travel, with, with asylum seeking. Um, for example, uh, supported, uh, they have a, they, Rainbow Railroad runs a safe house in Pakistan, which is like a halfway home almost for people fleeing Afghanistan uh, after the after the Taliban took over and being queer became um, basically a death sentence. So there, there's a lot of really 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 pivotal work like that 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 is in desperate need of support. That, so that's that's really what we want to focus our attention on. Yeah, and if you're watching this in in Toronto or Vancouver, Rainbow yeah. Railroad has 
uh, offices in both places yeah. that potentially volunteer. It's an yeah, incredible they, organization. They do, they do unbelievable work. And they, I mean, you know, with, with relatively limited resources, um, they can basically save a life, you know, and, and change someone's entire world. Like getting someone out of uh, a situation that th is that dangerous and um, supporting them as thoroughly as Rainbow Railroad does and giving them a new home and a new opportunity at life in a place where they can be themselves and they can, they can live um, authentically and safely. And, and it's like it, they can do a lot with, with a little, yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're bringing awareness to to them and all the other initiatives that are coming in under this project. Yeah, no, we're we're just we're so honored to be even a small part of these of these organizations that are doing this work. I mean, obviously, you and Sebastian are both out queer actors, yeah. um, which uh, seems to be less rare than it was, say, ten years ago. Yeah. But it, one of the things that gives me a lot of joy, just sort of watching the two of you on Instagram or whatever, is that it seems like you have a community of fellow out queer actors, yeah. and that is very new to me. I just, I'm, or to for me to yeah. sort of witness. I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what it's like, sort of having that community as you've been navigating the world as an out queer actor, which you have been for three or four years or so. It gives me hope how quickly things seem to be changing, or at least in certain bubbles and certain places, how quickly it seems to be changing. It took me so long to arrive at a place, both in my personal life and in my professional life, where I could come out, where I could talk about it, where I could uh, even consider putting a label on it. Um, it was a really like torturous process for me, and which I think it has, it is for a lot of people. Um, but talking to younger queer artists, it, it just seems like there's an, it seems like the path is getting wider and the number of doors and windows that are open are increasing. It just, it gives me a lot of hope. And it, 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 queer people make the good stuff, you know, like they make, like the, everywhere you go, the people who are making interesting things are um, usually queer or, or, or wish they were, you know, it's, it's yeah. like if you're making art, whether you're making films, whether you're an actor, whether you're a musician, whether you're a painter, and this goes back into our history too, like queer people and queer identity has always been at the center of creativity. And I mean, by being out, both you and Sebastian are given the opportunity to change a lot of people's lives by, even by creating this, this project, there's a lot of people who are gonna see that, they're gonna find hope in that, they're gonna find even just a little bit of safety in, in seeing that two people that they see on TV are queer. You know, I don't feel like I had that growing up, at least in terms of people who were in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. I mean, I hope if someone can, you know, uh, can look at us or look at, at the organization and, and feel some sense of, of uh, comfort or community, that would, I mean, that nothing could make either of us happier. Um, but also for me, coming out personally, I just felt like a little bit suffocated, you know, like a little, like I, I had, I'd spent I'd been working since I was a kid and I'd, I'd been, I'd played gay roles in, in things while being in the closet professionally. And there was a point where I was just like, why, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I, I'm telling myself and I'm telling my friends and I'm telling my family that this is something that I, a part of myself that I love. And this is an essential part of myself. This is something that I wouldn't trade away if I could. And yet I'm, the way I'm behaving and the way that I'm not talking about things, like, if it's not shame or embarrassment or fear, what is it? I didn't want to be um, complicit at all in this idea. I didn't want someone to look at me. Even, I mean, I have a tiny little corner of the world, but like, I didn't want someone to look at me and feel like, why is he hiding it? <laughs> but it is still wild. Yes. What is going on in terms of like people either choosing not to or feeling forced not to. I was just curious, what your thoughts are on why that still is, because things have changed, but it does seem like there's a, a really yeah. intense amount of people who feel like they can't, which and you were just talking about how dark that was for you. Like imagine yeah. doing that till you're 70 years old no, and creating no, no. like a fake family. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a few things. I think A, the, cult, the culture is, as we see every time we open a newspaper, still, and in some ways increasingly hostile to queer life, um, especially if you're not a white gay man, right? Um, that there's still this sort of conception that your private life is your private life. People don't need to know about it, yeah. you know? And that in some way by revealing more and more of yourself, you are limiting people's imagination of you. Um, but it's never really a consideration that straight people are told to take, you know, like people, you look at, you open Instagram and you know everything about 
actors' dating lives and their interests and what movies they like and what clothes they they're like. I don't know why that that voice suddenly only applies to when you're queer and and you shouldn't mention it. It does seem like that, in small ways at least, is changing through film and television. And I, I do want to shift gears, because you're also a cinephile. Like, I read your Criterion Collection list uh, uh, yesterday doing research yeah. for this, and it's like a, it's a deep cut list. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I, I probably did that one like five or six years ago, and I feel like half of it was honest and half of it was me trying to look impressive. But yeah, no, I love movies, and I, I mean, I don't know, partly because I like them and partly because I, I, I don't know what else I would do. I have no other talents or abilities, so I'm... It's, I, I really do think, in a way, movies are re the last refuge for people who want to be artists but aren't good at anything else. Because, oh, I, I, but I mean that. I think it's like, you know, I can't sing. I don't have any musical ability. I can't dance. I can't paint. I can't draw. But somehow movies are a place where you get to harness all of those things still, you know? Like, you get to work with great composers and great production designers and great costume designers and, and cinematographers. And you get, to, you get to sort of indulge in these art forms that you love, but you have no ability to do. So yeah, I can't really imagine doing much else with my life. I mean, I think most people, including myself, would argue that acting, writing, and directing are all incredible artistic capabilities. So I wouldn't say so sure. so short. Although I, I don't know, I, 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 I was talking to a friend about this the other day. I was like, my nightmare, like my vision of hell is a talent show. Okay. Like I, have, like, any, I couldn't think of a thing I could do on stage. It's, it's, it would be my nightmare. A monologue? Even that, <laughs> even that I would terrify me. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. And for those who want to help out and be involved even in our own little way, how can we do that? Yeah, I mean, we have a website, queerwasalwaysheer.com, and you can also find us on Instagram, which is also at queerwasalwaysheer. Uh, so pretty much if you type queerwasalwaysheer into any of the places, you'll okay. find us. Um, and I mean, we're pretty new. We, the, we only got going this summer, so we're like celebrating six months basically. But we hope that in the next six months, uh, we will have a lot going on in different places in the world, online, in person, opportunities for people to get involved. So yeah, um, stay tuned. Yeah, well, yeah. best of luck. I'll be following along and Thank I hope you. That, it, that it achieves everything you want it to. Thank you. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, that was a loud, that was a flash. I hope I didn't blink. Everyone always thinks they do and then they yeah. didn't blink that time. <laughs>